is Ann Amen. I am the uh, uh, Dean of Natural Sciences and a professor of biology at Pacific Lutheran University. And it's my pleasure this evening to uh, introduce you to the biology department at PLU. Um, as we get started, here is my contact information. So if you had any questions, I'd be happy to answer them later on, although there should be time for questions and answers later on this evening. So let's get started. All right. So um, the biology department at PLU offers a degree, a Bachelor of Science degree in biology, as well as a Bachelor of Arts degree. And the main differences between those two degrees are the um, primarily the supporting coursework associated with them. So for our Bachelor of Science degree, um, that requires students to take a, a year of physics. It requires them to take um, a semester of organic chemistry. It requires them to take additional math courses, as well as a, um, a few additional uh, upper division biology courses. Uh, our Bachelor of Arts degree um, uh, has recommendations for taking some of that coursework, but it is not required. So the Bachelor of Arts degree allows students more flexibility to perhaps double major or um, uh, do some additional curriculum at PLU, maybe a, a couple minors or study away or a couple of uh, different types of um, curriculum or opportunities, uh, the Bachelor of Arts can provide some flexibility for that. We also offer a biology minor. Um, so uh, through natural sciences at PLU, many of our biology majors also receive pre-health sciences advising. And so that is an advising program that we have for students who are interested in pursuing uh, medical school, dental school, um, or other types of uh, graduate programs in health professions. So our faculty in the biology department at PLU are really uh, quite excellent and devoted teachers. Um, they are um, teaching as their primary uh, vocation. That is what they are interested in doing, that is what they devote their careers to uh, on a daily basis, is working with students and educating them in biology at the undergraduate level. Um, in fact, um, one of my colleagues uh, shown in the upper right, Dr. Amy Zigismund, was recently awarded an undergraduate teaching award from the American Society for Microbiology for her uh, uh, career-long devotion to undergraduate education. But my colleagues overall are just excellent teachers who are really um, uh, devoted to students learning and learning how to learn for themselves. My colleagues in the biology department are also productive scholars and mentors. So they are doing research in their disciplines within biology. And um, they're also uh, quite frequently engaging undergraduate students in biology in that process. Additionally, um, several of my colleagues in the biology department, they do research on undergraduate education in STEM. So they are, their research programs, which also often involve our students, are to look at best practices for students to actually learn undergraduate science. Um, so shown in the upper right here is my colleague, um, Dr. Shannon Seidel, working with two PLU undergraduate students on a project where they are looking at um, how noisy a classroom is because um, noisy classrooms are those where students are engaged in their learning, they're talking about material with each other, and noisy classrooms have been shown to be uh, classrooms where more student learning is happening. And then additionally, my colleague, uh, Dr. Amy Zigisman, um, studies uh, metacognition, which is, has to do with how aware 
are students of their own learning practices. Um, and uh, her research has shown that by having students having increased awareness, they actually learn more. So the point here is that we have uh, faculty members in the biology department at PLU uh, who are truly engaged in student learning as part of their research programs. And that really rubs off on the rest of us as well. So um, as I said, our faculty are committed to undergraduate education. All of our classes and lab experiences at PLU are taught by our faculty. And um, we have no graduate student teaching assistants. Um, our classes are small. And as a result of our small classes, that really allows our faculty to get to know our students on an individual basis um, and know uh, what's going on with them, um, what their hopes and dreams are. Uh, and then when it comes to the point where students are looking for letters of recommendation, our faculty can really write rich, meaningful letters of recommendation because we know our students as individuals. Our faculty engage our students in their own learning in a variety of different ways. I've already alluded to the noisy classroom. Um, that can result from uh, students doing active learning in the classroom and different types of group work. And our, we're committed to our students learning, not just scientific content, but much more than that. And um, we want our students to learn skills uh, that are required to be a scientist and how, how to learn how to learn. Um, uh, you know, at some point after graduation, a student needs to know where to look for information for themselves and how to acquire and learn that information. We also uh, are committed to our students learning how to be a professional as well as an engaged citizen. So at PLU, we teach science in a liberal arts context. Um, this allows students to follow multiple passions. So we have a lot of biology students who are also student athletes or who have a double major in another area that is completely unrelated to biology or who are musicians in our wonderful music ensembles on campus. And so um, uh, at PLU, a biology student doesn't have to fit neatly into a box that only says biology. They can pursue multiple passions. Uh, because of our liberal arts context, this also allows our students to draw connections between um, different interests or different disciplines that they are learning about, their different coursework. Uh, I think this um, uh, photo on the right here, this is on the wall in our Reiki Science Center, which is where our biology program is housed. And I think it really encompasses very well what it means to be a biologist in the liberal arts context at PLU. Um, this quote is actually from one of our PLU alums who um, is a physician, and he actually uh, went on to become the director of the CDC and helped to eradicate smallpox. So this is really inspiring to us and um, underlies what it means to be a biology or a science student at PLU. Uh, our students, through their liberal arts uh, coursework, as well as our science coursework, learn to write effectively present verbally and think critically. Okay. So our students have opportunities for undergraduate research, both on and off campus. Um, so these are a couple of visuals of that. On campus, the division, or excuse me, the College of Natural Sciences has a summer undergraduate research program each summer where faculty uh, work with students on the faculty members research projects and um, the students are paid as part of this program um, to work with the faculty member on those projects and so we have faculty involved with these types of experiences. We also have um, students who apply for some rather prestigious off-campus research positions each summer um, some of these are through the National Science Foundation Research Experiences for Undergraduates um, projects. Some of them are for we, uh, other institutions. We've had 
um, a PLU biology student working at Johns Hopkins in the summer. We've had them working for the Smithsonian. Um, so we've had them, uh, they, they've been accepted to some quite prestigious programs around the country and um, are, are performing research in those places as well. Through the biology department, there are a number of student opportunities for working. Um, and so those include things like being a laboratory prep worker, helping to make the different reagents um, required for us to do our student labs each week. We also have students who work as teaching assistants. Um, they're not ever left responsible for a lab section on their own, but rather they serve as an extra set of hands during a lab period during which there's a professor there, but they're uh, an extra set of hands kind of helping out during a lab. We also have students who work as uh, greenhouse assistants in our greenhouse on campus. So there's a, a lot of cool opportunities to work for the biology department. And not only are these ways to make money, but they are also um, ways to learn skills that you can put on your resume um, for after you graduate to help make you more marketable in, in getting a job or going on to graduate school. Through the biology department at PLU, there are a number of uh, student opportunities for study away. Um, I actually think it's one of the cool things about our program is that um, at some other schools, it can be challenging for biology students and other science students to do study abroad. Um, at PLU, we have a number of uh, programs that allow for biology students to study away. Um, in the upper left is a photo from one of my colleagues um, who does a January term, which is a one month term, um, uh, marine biology course in the Bahamas. So um, it, that he teaches an upper division course in biology in the Bahamas um, in January, and that's quite popular. We also have biology students who are taking biology and other science coursework uh, through several of our semester long gateway programs. And a few of those are shown here, um, our programs in Norway, Namibia and Trinidad and Tobago, but we've definitely had biology students participate in several of our other gateways as well, including our Oxford program and our program in Oaxaca. Through the uh, College of Natural Sciences at PLU, um, biology students have the opportunity to participate in our NatSci Fellows program. This is a program that encourages students to um, do uh, some different types of professional development, um, uh, one of which is um, participating in our alumni mentoring program. So through that particular program, uh, students are matched with PLU alums in their area of interest, and then they engage in a, um, a conversation with them over the course of the academic year to learn more about the alum and how they got to where they are. Um, and these relationships um, we ha are, have been quite rich where the, you know, the, the uh, alum, alum and the student really kind of get along and exchange information and the alum can be very helpful in helping to guide and mentor our undergraduate students. Through the NatSci Fellows Program, um, this also helps to uh, support students getting appropriate coursework support. For example, taking advantage of our academic assistance tutors um, and also visiting our professors in their office hours. And then also um, the NatSci Fellows Program offers opportunities for social and wellness, um, i.e. fun in a science context. So, Overall, our students are quite successful. Our biology students go on to do a pretty wide variety of different kinds of things upon graduation. Um, many of them go off and get jobs right away, working in labs or in industry. Um, some go to graduate school. In fact, um, uh, some recent data that we have shows that about 41% of our 
PLU biology grads go on to some type of graduate program um, or professional school. Uh, and some of them go on to careers in K through 12 education. They may work at other universities um, or for nonprofits or for various government agencies. So I uh, mentioned this particular slide as an example of the quality of biology at PLU. Um, we did some analysis of our alums from between 2008 and 2018 of those who specifically apply to medical school or dental school. And um, of those who applied to medical school, um, just shy of 80% were accepted. And similarly, um, we saw the same trend for those who applied to dental school. And both our medical school and dental school acceptance rates are well above the national averages. Um, I want to just mention the caveat that um, some of the individuals, some of our students who applied to medical school, it took them um, more than one round of applications to be accepted. So um, I just wanted to mention that, that uh, it wasn't all first time everybody got in, but many of them did get in on the first time. And um, so this is due to the work of our pre-health sciences advising team, which is a group of faculty members who really work with our uh, PLU students through this particular process um, and we'll continue to work with students even after they have graduated from PLU. We'll work with our alums as well. And this particular photo is of a graduating class from the University of Washington Medical School from a few years back. And um, it had five PLU alums in that particular graduating class. Um, so these PLU students did not all graduate from PLU at the same time, but they did graduate from medical school together in the same class. So we're pretty excited and proud of them. All right, at this point, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'd be happy to take any questions from any of you who are watching. You can put them in the chat. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, thank you. Okay, so somebody asked um, what type of volunteer opportunities are in the area such as for clinical hours? So that's a great question. Um, uh, so we uh, work with um, uh, um, a particular, well, we've added recently to um, uh, a particular program called the COPE Scholars Program. This is a program um, that uh, helps uh, students gain clinical experiences in the hospital setting. Um, and so they have uh, worked with a number of our PLU students um, in the last uh, year or so, helping to them to our students to get these particular types of uh, um, uh, clinical hours. And actually, not just plain clinical hours, but there are opportunities to do rotations through different aspects of a hospital setting, so that students can get more perspective, more variety in the types of experiences that they have. Um, we, as uh, on the pre-health sciences advising team, we often encourage our students to work through this, um, uh, our alumni and student connections office, which has a database of our alums, which we call Loot Link. And it is possible to go into Loot Link and look for alums who um, have gone on to become physicians or actually any type of profession and connect with them and ask them about um, how they went about finding clinical experiences. And so that then gives our students some additional resources for how to ask that particular question, how to go about finding clinical experiences. So that's another resource we often um, will uh, give to our students um, and that is available to them. Um, and um, we also have a number of different um, 
scribing services, services that we um, will advertise that are um, pretty happy with our PLU students working for them as scribes. And that is an interesting way to get clinical hours. One of the things that's kind of an advantage to that possibility is that scribing is something that is a paid experience. So um, whereas a lot of the other types of uh, ways to get clinical hours are not paid experiences. So those are kind of um, uh, three different ways that um, our students um, have gone about trying to get clinical hours. Um, one was this COPE Scholars Program that I mentioned. The second was connecting with our alums through our loot link, um, through our alumni and student connections office. And the third um, uh, is uh, through scribing. Okay. So the next question, are there other research opportunities than the summer program, like research during the school year? So that is a good question. Um, so we do have some students and faculty that work on um, research during the academic year, um, perhaps for independent study, um, but we don't have um, the, the, uh, a program that runs uh, through the academic year. So uh, students, if they wanted to do that, would need to connect with a particular faculty member to work on their project during the academic year. And uh, we also have uh, students who are doing um, off-campus research. I know this is kind of a, another summer thing, but we have a, had a number of students who have worked at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center up in Seattle over the course of the summer as well. Um, uh, so those are some different um, uh, possibilities as well. All right. So another question has been asked. Typically, how well do credits from associate's degrees transfer over into the program. Okay, so um, uh, PLU uh, has, uh, will take a, a DTA, a direct transfer um, for, that would satisfy, if you've taken, if you've completed the DTA, that satisfies your general education coursework um, with the exception of a uh, religion class and a class that focuses in on diversity. Um, but otherwise, if you have that particular DTA, which um, often is associated with certain associate degrees, um, transfers over quite well. Um, some other things to think about with respect to transferring coursework, um, PLU is on a semester system whereas um, our local community colleges typically are on a quarter system. So if you have the opportunity to take science coursework at the community college level, um, I would highly recommend that if you can, to take the full year of something like, for example, intro biology or intro chemistry, um, so that then that would transfer to PLU as satisfying two full semesters at PLU of our comparable introductory biology or introductory chemistry series. So just a, a tip with that, okay? Um, okay, there's another question here. Um, do you know the approximate percent of pre-health students who take a gap year before med school? That's a great question. Um, so I've been at PLU for, 20 years. Um, when I started at PLU, I would say that probably the majority of our students were applying to go to med school immediately after they graduated from PLU. That has definitely shifted. And at this point in time, I would say that probably the majority of our students, most of our students are taking a gap year before they go on to medical school. Um, I think that is pretty common. Um, during that time, they are um, prepping themselves in a number of different ways. For example, that might be a time where they can really focus on working on their application or studying for the MCATs, writing their personal statements, or gaining additional types of experiences um, that would allow them to be more competitive for applying to medical school. Um, so um, uh, at this point, I would say um, probably most of our students are taking a gap year. 
All right. Another question is, are there marine biology internships? Um, so uh, we do have a faculty member, Dr. Mike Behrens, who is a marine biologist. He's the one who teaches that J-term course in the Bahamas. And he does do uh, research and that is often involving undergraduate students as part of that research project. Um, so as far as PLU faculty members go, he would be the one that would most likely be doing research with students. We have had students who have gotten to do marine biology through other mechanisms, through um, off-campus research programs. Great, thank you. And let's see, there's another question here. Are there ecology and evolutionary biology labs on campus, or is on-campus research primarily through independent study with an advisor? Um, so, okay, so we do teach courses in ecology and evolution, and both of those courses have lab experiences associated with them. Um, so students are doing that those types of labs um, as part of their coursework. Um, and we do have faculty members that do research in those areas as well and involve students in those research areas. Um, so during the academic year, those uh, faculty, if they're gonna be doing research with students are largely doing that through independent study. Although um, uh, some of that, they, sometimes they are doing research with students over the summer through our undergraduate research program. I hope I've covered what you wanted to know there. Great. Are there any other questions? You're welcome to ask things about PLU more generally or about science at PLU as well. Uh, yes, this Zoom is being recorded, so it should be available to you. If you have any more questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so um, here's a question. How does your program stand out from other local private universities apart from study abroad? That's a great question. Um, let's see. So I think one of the things that um, makes our uh, biology students stand out and their education stand out from other institutions um, has to do with um, that slide that I showed during my presentation about um, uh, uh, science in a liberal arts context. It feels like our students are really interested in being engaged in the world, understanding how biology intersects with world issues. Um, and um, uh, I feel like we do a really good job at um, working with those students, um, uh, not just science and biology is not just kind of in this um, narrow window, but in showing the intersections between biology and so many other aspects of their education and of life overall. So um, it feels to me that our students really have this uh, awareness and our faculty really work with our students on understanding how biology is integrated with everything else. Okay, there's another question here. If you're entering as a first year student, will you be required to take certain classes or can you take classes that align with your intended major? Um, okay, so that's a, a great question. Um, so uh, our first year biology students um, typically would take uh, biology 225 
uh, during their first year. That particular course is offered in either fall or spring semester. Um, our biology students would also typically take Chem 115, which is the first semester of, of um, general chemistry during their first year. Um, first year students have uh, pr uh, specific requirements. Um, they have to take a, uh, a writing class in the fall semester of their first year. So that's a kind of a, a, a first year requirement. And then they also um, typically have to take a second course as a, for a second course during the spring of their first year. It's another first year type of requirement. Um, so those particular requirements are for all first year students. Um, biology majors can begin in their biology coursework by taking introductory biology and introductory chemistry. Um, we also, depending on where students are with their math level, would encourage them to take math pretty early on during their time at PLU. And also um, the first year is a time to perhaps take other coursework and exploring um, other disciplines as part of our general education program. Thank you. Okay. Question, would you recommend that running start or dual enrollment students hold off on the three year, three course biology series until undergrad, or would it be okay to take the first cellular class at Bellevue College, for example? Um, so I would say that um, it would be cleanest if um, you either would take the whole series at Bellevue College or another um, uh, community college, or to uh, if you can't take the whole three quarter series, then to um, wait to take it at PLU. Um, so another question that has come in is, is credit offered for AP biology if you have received a four or five on the exam? Um, so uh, you can earn credit for AP biology um, for non-majors biology. So it does not substitute for our first course in biology for our majors, but it would count as a non-majors biology course that would satisfy a general education requirement. These are great questions, so keep, keep asking questions if you have any more. All right. All right. Oh, um, okay. Another question just came in. How important is calculus to med school applications? Um, so that kind of depends on the medical school. Um, uh, at this point in time, um, most medical schools don't um, require calculus, although there are some exceptions to that. So it's just uh, important to be kind of careful in which medical schools you are considering to make sure that you are meeting the prereqs that they require. Great, thank you for that. All right, I'll just wait another little bit to see if any more questions come in. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. Um, very happy to have you. And again, um, I will, um, my email address is amonaj at plu.edu. My name is Ann Amon, and I'm a professor of biology. And um, oh, Another question came in here. Do you get many students wanting to go into marine biology? Um, I think we do get a reasonable number of students that are interested in that area. 
we have a lot of coursework that um, works for that. Um, uh, for example, we have coursework in ecology and um, uh, evolution. We do have a course in marine biology specifically. Um, we have um, uh, also at times specialized courses in, in certain areas of ecology, um, but we do not have a marine biology um, major or emphasis area within our curriculum. Um, most we offer a general biology um, undergraduate degree. Um, we have found that having a, a, um, a good foundation in biology is helpful and students typically then have the opportunity to specialize as graduate students if that's what they choose to do. Um, so we don't um, specialize in marine biology at the undergraduate level, although we do have quite a bit of coursework that um, is, would be of interest to someone who's in, interested in marine biology. All right, great. Any more questions? Oh, okay, let's see. From the students that end up getting into med school, would you say a higher quantity got a degree in Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science? Um, so I would say that um, by far more of them were Bachelor of Science than Bachelor of Arts. The reason that is, is because the Bachelor of Science curriculum for the biology major is more consistent with the prerequisites for medical school. So for example, um, for medical school, uh, you typically have to take a year of introductory physics, um, and that is part of the BS curriculum, but not part of the BA curriculum. Um, additionally, uh, for medical school, students typically have to take um, a year of organic chemistry, and organic chemistry is part of the curriculum for the BS in biology, but not for the BA. Um, so for those particular reasons, I think that more of our students who are interested in going into medical medical school um, end up being BS biology majors than BA students. Great question. All right. Wait another few seconds to see if any more questions show up in the Q&A. All right, great. Well, thank you all so much again for joining me this evening. Um, and feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions that um, come up later. I'm happy to answer them for you. And good luck to you in your college search process. And um, since Thanksgiving is next week, um, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving with your family and friends. Thank you. Good night.